Hi guys, my name is Emily, and today we'll be doing a January wrap-up. So, let's talk about these. The first book I read in January was Coraline by Neil Gaiman. I have talked about this in a review video, so I will link that in the description down below. The next book I read in January was Gaga Feminism by J. Jack Halberson. This is a very contemporary look at feminism and he talks about quote-unquote gaga feminism and he defines this new sort of feminism which is interesting. It was a very interesting book and I specifically enjoyed the chapter on the 2000s string of rom-coms in which, in which beautiful high achieving women get together with the schlubby man and that's basically what every movie is about in that time period and I thought that was really interesting and it made me feel sad that I had watched all of those movies recently. Then I reread Sexual Textual Politics by Terrell Moi. This is again a work of feminist analysis. I read this for my thesis, for my dissertation, and it linked me to another text that I ended up picking up which was nice. This wasn't super helpful for my thesis but it led me to another book. I read the first essay in Stranger Shores, um, literary essays from 1986 to 1999 by J.M. Katsaya. This, um, I only read the first essay from because it was relevant to my thesis on what is canon and what becomes canon in literature, and I thought that was interesting. I would recommend checking that essay out if you are interested at all in discussions about why we canonize certain texts. The next book I read is for my book club. It is Fifteen Dogs by Andre Alexis. This is a piece of Canlet. It was published last year. It was published by Coach House Books in Toronto, which is a very cool publishing press. I have a review for this coming out soon because I really, really enjoyed this. This is a story of what happens when Hermes and Apollo like, give human thought to dogs and it's just, it's awesome. Then I read New Gaiman's Coraline, um, the graphic novel adaptation by P. Craig Russell. This, again, I talk about in my review for Coraline, so I'm not going to talk about it here. Then I reread Gender Trouble by Judith Butler. This looks at gender as a social construct and gender as a performance, and a lot of people draw on these ideas, and so it's kind of a foundational text for a lot of current feminist thought, and it was really good. I made a lot of notes. Um, it was hard to get through because I find Judith Butler's writing is kind of <sighs> unnecessarily difficult. So her theory is definitely meant for academics. It's not meant for everybody. It's not a it's not accessible theory the way Halberstam's Gaga feminism is. Then I read Hyperbole and a Half by Ali Brosh. I really enjoyed this collection. And the blurb on the front says, "Unfortunate situations, flawed coping mechanisms, mayhem, and other things that happened." And I read this like one story a night before bed, and I really really enjoyed it. This collection inspired me to pick up a couple of other graphic novels, which I talked about in my January haul part. Two. So if you want to check that out and see what I picked up, you can go there. But I really enjoyed this, especially the stories about the dogs, because I have dogs and my dogs are just as stupid. And just for those stories, I would highly recommend this. The next book I read is This Monstrous Thing by Mackenzie Lee. This is a Frankenstein retelling but steampunk, and so it draws on a lot of the same theme. The premise is that people who are damaged end up with clockwork parts, so mechanical cogs and gears kind of parts to replace their organs. These people are really not liked by society. They're feared because um, it goes against nature, it goes against God to have this man-made thing in your body. It's about a young boy named Alistair and what happens when he reanimates his dead brother with clockwork and it draws on Mary Shelley's Frankenstein quite a lot, and I would really like to do a full review of this novel at some point. For my thesis, I reread the first three Harry Potter books, so I'm currently working on chapter one, and chapter one is going to deal with these first three books, and so I had to reread them and make some more notes, and also, has anybody noticed that there is a chamber for ethnic cleansing in the basement of Hogwarts? Like, what the fuck? Then I read Hermione Granger Saves the Day, which is a collection of essays arguing that Hermione is a feminist character and it is edited together by Christopher E. Bell. I will try and put a picture of it on the screen, maybe over here. Um, it has a horrible cover. I, I think the cover is just hilariously bad, but the essays in it are really cool. It's interesting the different ways that people respond to 
other Harry Potter critics. So everybody seems to draw on Eliza T. Drasang's essay, which is in the Harry Potter and the Ivory Tower collection. Drasang's essay is about Hermione and like the power of the name and how that um, carries forward through classical literature and what kind of power Hermione should have. And then based on the Harry Potter series at the point of her writing, which I think is the first like three to four books, um, Drusang argues that Hermione cannot be read as a feminist character for X, Y, and Z. And so the authors in Hermione Granger Saves the Day speak back to this essay along with another essay written by two people whose names I can't remember at this moment. But they're speaking back to these texts that argue against Hermione being a feminist character and arguing why you could read Hermione as a feminist character. And so I thought the whole collection was really cool. The ebook is available for download from Amazon also if you don't have access to a university library. So if you're interested, it's there. The next book I read was Marcus Sedgwick's My Sword Hand is Singing, which is a gothic piece of young adult literature. It is about Peter and his dad has this super secret box and what's in the super secret box and then all these people called the hostages aka vampires start coming back from the dead and like the town is getting attacked and it's all bad and um, Peter has to save the day because Peter's our hero and it's his coming of age story and it's this vampiric gothic novel. It was okay. I didn't love it. If you've read this, I did some research. The exile shack that they put Agnes in is a real thing. The wedding to the dead is a real thing, which is absolutely mind-blowing and terrifying and I might do a review of this just to talk about that scene. So keep an eye out for that. Then I read this uh, beautiful, beautiful Mennonite poetry collection by Audrey Petker Thiessen. This is called Standing All the Night Through and it is just absolutely beautiful. It is so good and I believe it's out of print currently so you'd have to look for a used copy if you're interested. If you're interested in good poetry that is full of references. Like there's so much you can pull through here and she does some interesting things with like loving Menno and fucking Jesus and how those two kind of get equated and like the desire for community, the desire for the promises of religion and the desire for a real life human man kind of all get mushed together in this weirdly erotic and traumatic poetry. I loved this. I absolutely loved this. It was so beautiful and I think it asks a lot of questions about community and naming and trauma and how we can express those. So I would highly recommend that you check this out. Then again for the thesis I reread uh, First Test and Page by Tamora Pierce. Again I'm working on chapter one. Chapter one is going to look at Kel in the first two books of the Protector of the Small series and so so I would highly recommend that you check out Tamara Pierce. I do have a review of this series of all four books kind of mashed together, I believe, and I will link that down below. These are amazing. If you love YA fantasy, if you love strong female characters, this is for you. And lastly, this month, I wrapped up the month with a very traumatic read. So this is Half Breed by Maria Campbell. It's a biography of a um, I believe we would call her Métis now, um, but at the time when she was writing this, she's writing about her childhood to like her mid-twenties. The Métis people were still referred to as half-breeds as a very like derogatory negative term. This is her account of her childhood and growing up and the hardships and the racism and the sexism and the abuse and the alcoholism and just all, all the things, all the things. And it was such a hard read. I had to read this for school for my Indigenous literature course and it was a really hard read and I'm really looking forward to our discussion of this novel on Monday. It's an important read but it's a hard read. I would recommend that you check this out if you have an interest in Canlet or if you have an interest in Indigenous literature because it's quite eye-opening. So that is my January wrap-up. Let me know what your favorite book you read this month was. I think it's a toss-up between my favorite childhood series, Protector of the Small Novels, and Andre Alexis, 15 Dogs. Th those are those are standing out in my mind as really excellent reads this month. Let me know if you've read any of these. Let's chat. If you'd like to see reviews for any of these, like a full review for any of these that I've mentioned, let me know. I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!